Oh, oh, hello. You just caught me doing a bit of uh, stone clearing with my dog, Wolfie the dog. There she is. Um, thanks for watching another episode of Rahalastaba. This one, we've got Marlon and Paddy from Emmerdale. They're uh, Dominic Brunt and Mark Charnock. They're really great guys. Uh, the first one we did on this one, um, something went a bit wrong. <laughs> uh, you might be able to pick up some clues from this one. Uh, this is at Lead City Varieties. It's a really good one, they're great guys. Uh, and if you enjoy watching this, why not come and see us live? We're on tour right now. We'll be in Brighton on the 15th of September and Leicester, I think, on the 19th of September. And then we're coming to Bristol, which I think is sold out, and Richmond on the 29th of September, I think, from off the top of my head. Go and check richtain.com slash gigs and you'll be able to find out. Uh, I've got, uh, we've got uh, tape face on that one. Plus Plus, uh, very, a potentially very exciting guest that I cannot yet reveal, but may have been revealed on the website, so go and look. Uh, I'm very excited about that, so it's well worth coming to that Richmond one. Uh, Brighton, we've got Simon Evans and to be announced, uh, because I haven't booked anyone yet. Uh, but again, aiming for a big name. We'd love to see you at either of those gigs, which are big theatres, which uh, uh, still have some tickets left. Uh, if you look through the rest of the gigs, uh, Winchester sold out, uh, and some of them are selling really quickly. Glasgow selling really fast. We've got Limmy and uh, Fern Brady on for that one. Uh, so just check uh, richtoning.com slash rahalastapata slash tour if you want to do look at it a different way and see all the guests or go to rahalastapata.co.uk where all the information also is and you can become a badger there and get the membership pack and all that stuff. And there's a kickstart coming up soon again as well which is very exciting. Anyway, let's sit back, relax and enjoy these two dudes from off of Emmerdale who you're going to like a lot, I promise you. Don't pass this one by just because you don't watch Emmerdale. Uh, it's Emmerdale Farm anyway, everyone knows that. See ya, bye! Oh, I just remembered, uh, we have got a new Kickstarter coming. Go to rahalaspa.co.uk slash Kickstarter and you can find out all about the amazing Trump card game. Not that Donald Trump, like Trumps, you know, the old Trumps games. We've got cards coming out. We've got all sorts of stuff, T-shirts, uh, incredible badges, lots of fun. Uh, so go and check that out. And we're hopefully going to pay for filming all of the tour if we can get enough money. So please support us if you can. Uh, if not, just enjoy these podcasts for free. Thanks very much for watching. Bye. Press a button, I'm not sure it worked. So welcome, hello! Oh my goodness. Uh, still, I've still got post-traumatic stress sort of <laughs> from last week's show. Uh, welcome. Oh good. Uh, welcome to uh, Richard Herring's uh, Let's Start Teabagging podcast. It's, um, <laughs> it's a week by week instruction on uh, the art of teabagging, but from the perspective of the person who's being teabagged. It's, it's all the stuff you'll need to know what you have to do to be teabagged. 14 year old in the front row. <laughs> so if he doesn't know, he won't know. Uh, but uh, I was hanging out by the world's tallest maypole in Barwick in Elmet the other day. <laughs> so some people in the next village were trying to steal it, but they couldn't carry it and had to leave it in the road. Literally, there's not, Leeds has nothing. Um, <laughs> uh, they call it Rahalastapa, so I don't know that's gonna catch, uh, that's, uh, that's gonna catch on. Uh, you know, Leeds uh, has more annual visitors than uh, Brighton uh, and uh, Torquay, I think. That's incredible, isn't it? When, you th when I look through, I thought I look through every time I come somewhere for tourist attractions, there's literally fuck all. <laughs> the only one I've had, I don't know what people are coming for. I think they're coming for Leeds Castle. They get here, they go, no mate, that's in Kent, fuck off. <laughs> That's all I can imagine. Uh, I was going to share this with you. This, I, I, the only one I could find was the um, Thwaite Mills Museum. Anyone been to Thwaite Mills Museum? I went to TripAdvisor. This is, uh, this is a review. It got a lot of good reviews. This is a one-star review from someone called Tony Pieface Jr. <laughs> a wast of good building land. Oh, 
old mill very nice. But it would look much better as residential apartments. <laughs> Loads of land on a private island. Excellent plot for building on. The whole thing was a bit strange, understaffed, no cafe, but a charge to get in. Kids bored to death, B-O-A-R-D. Chasing non-existence butterflies. So that's quite... I mean, that nothing that's made me more want to visit the uh, Thwaite Mills Museum than that. Uh, and Leeds, not famous for much, but um, you are in the Guinness Book of World Records. Not just for all the serial killers and <laughs> paedophiles you've created. <laughs> Terrorists, thanks for that. That's all good. <laughs> thanks, thanks for your help. Um, Leeds holds the Guinness World Record for the most people dressed as Sherlock Holmes at the same time. <laughs> you know that? Do you know how many it was? You were in it. You and 442 other people. I mean, that is so easily beatable. We could do that. We could beat that tonight. If only I thought to bring some deer stalkers with me. Uh, that is... Do come to Leeds. People are... Home. I'm, sure, I'm sure I had more to say. But look, we're going to crack on because one of my uh, guests this week has to get a, a train home. It sounds a bit later than we thought it would be. So, uh got two guests this week you may notice from the chairs you may have worked that out uh one of them is probably best known as Dwayne from 2.4 children and the other is probably best known as the petrol station attendant from 2.4 children this guy this is a great night i'm imagining there's a lot of i imagine there's really a lot of 2.4 children fans in the remember the 2.4 children mate i mean you know it was about 20 years before you were born it's going to go over your head. It's going to be fine. Will you please welcome Mark Charnock and Dominic Brunt, ladies and gentlemen. Come in. Come in. Thank you. Will you over here, choose which seat you want to go in. You have to hold a microphone up to your face. How are you doing, guys? Oh, you just nervous? tremendously well. <laughs> We, we heard a bit of the, room. the last one. Oh, we had a great time in the dressing room. It was so nice. Yeah. It was just nice to make connections with people. He's one of them human beings that you just really walk to straight away. <laughs> Good night. So you weren't in the same episode of Two Point Four Children, would you? That would be too much to ask. That would have been the dream. <laughs> I, my scene in Two Point Four Children was with me. Belinda, I can't Lang. remember. Lang and a chimpanzee. <laughs> and the, chim oh, and the chimpanzee won. <laughs> <laughs> Your petrol station tend to remember much about that? Too? Yeah, I'm annoyed that you got a name. I know. I never got a name. That's yeah. showbiz. Petrol attendant. No, no. I think you've been on £25 an episode more than me for a long time as yeah. well. And, it, is, and it, that matters. And that matters. <laughs> yeah. 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 And it's all from there, isn't it? It's all from your experience and your named character, yeah. Well, you were Ron Jarvis in Soldier Soldier. That sounds like <laughs> that's that. You were, <laughs> you were named. You were named then. I got a second name. Yeah. Though, yeah, Ron Jarvis. He sounds great. He was only in one episode. I want to hear more about Ron Jarvis. That's I the do name too. You give to him. <laughs> I want to hear more about Ron Jarvis. <laughs> he was he was a rapist. <laughs> and they. <laughs> Why the fuck are you laughing at that? Oh, sorry. I don't mean to swear. Sorry. Why would you laugh at that? Why would you? Why would you? We're in Leeds. We're in Leeds. <laughs> of course. Ron Jarvis. Ron Jarvis. <laughs> why, why, didn't they, why didn't they have him bow yet? Okay, so... Um, well, I mean, you are, you know... We, there's a, quite a lot of things I'm going to talk to you about individually before we get on to something that some people might know more about. Just off the top of your head? Yeah. <laughs> Just off the top of my head. Um, Mark, you've been in a lot of uh, really good soap operas. Uh, Coronation Street. Yeah. That's PC really Taylor, one. yeah. Yep. You've been in EastEnders. PC Taylor, yeah. <laughs> you, were, you were a delivery boy in Coronation Street. Thank you for mentioning and it. And you were PC Costigan in uh, EastEnders. Do you want to hear my speech from Coronation Street? I do, yeah, please. Pizza delivery boy. One marinara, one pepperoni, one quattro stagioni. Wow. Thank you very much. That's good. And it was, yeah. <laughs> no, really, though. I mean, really? it's good to know if they have to retake that scene, you're ready to go. They really should. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's all your soap opera work I can see uh, and 
You, uh... I, I arrested Derek on the red wreck for flashing in Coronation Street. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. You two are horrible people, aren't you? The things you're carrying. Oh, are. it's dark, dark times. Dark. <laughs> Terrible thing. Um, uh, you were a young man. This is good. You were a young You were man. a young man, Dominic. Young man well, in, 12, in the 12 Angry Men. The t- the yes, t- I was. Paul Merton, Paul Merton Tony, yeah. being Tony Hancock. Yes, with Rob Brydon. We wow. both had a line each and, and we became friends and then he dumped me. Ah. Oh. Never returned my call. Did he ever ring his mum up in the middle of the night? <laughs> you let, did you let it go? I'd let it go, didn't you? I'd let it go. I'd let it go. Let's have that. I just forget, move on. That's fine. That's the right thing to do. And I moved on to Emmerdale. Where is he now? <laughs> Emmerdale Farm you're in now, aren't you? Emmerdale, 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 Emmerdale Farm. Farm. No Farm. Emmerdale Farm. No farm. Uh, call, drop the farm Do you call them Opal Fruits or do you call them Starburst? Do you call them Opal Fruits? <laughs> really? Call them, That's the analogy. Do you call them Marathons or Snickers? What do you call them? Snickers Marathons. because... Marathons. Okay. They were called <laughs> Snickers originally, so technically you are correct. But they were then called Marathons here. They were called marathons in the UK in an attempt to um, make them appear like a health food. Really? Yeah. Is that a true story? Yeah. I mean, if you're running marathons, they're probably quite a good thing to have. But yeah, I think Richard Osman is the font of all knowledge about chocolate bars and where to stick them. So, um... <laughs> Let's, all right, look, yeah, I, I've, I've been dancing around it. You are, you're both in a uh, popular Emmerdale farm. Uh, <laughs> The Emmerdale Farm, which I haven't seen for a little while. Is Amos still in that? Because it was, it was the, my favourite Amos. That, that's the laughter of deri- that's derisive <laughs> laughter. And it, how are you getting over the, uh, the plane crash? Is that... I mean, that must well, still, even all this Are time. we really here already? <laughs> yeah. Is that where we are yeah. already? Yeah. That was before we joined the plane I know, crash. but it must still haunt the village. It, it's, an, it's an open wound. Yeah. I mean, there's been a lot of things that have happened since, so probably you might have forgotten it, but there's, 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 quite an in, there's a lot happens in that village. Yes, yes, there is. It's yeah. one of the most dangerous places to live <laughs> on the planet. Yeah. Both of you have been shot in the show. Is have that you right? been shot? Have you been shot? I, thought I read I've a been character shot. break. You've been shot, or, you've been, or maybe you shot someone. You nearly you got someone? caught in a... You were nearly killed in a... No, was it threshing accident? Oh, yeah, I've been shot. Oh, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I have been shot. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I have been shot. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I've been shot. Yeah. What? Well, who shot you? Uh, the, uh, Robert on Ryan. Uh, thing yes, he did shot. shoot you, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I know. I've done a lot of research into this. I've watched every single Very episode. <laughs> I've watched every uh, one thousand eight hundred and one episodes you've been in. According Is that to, right? According Where did to you find IMDb, that information? IMDb. I don't know if that's up to date or whether that's. Definitely not. When that's you click amazing. on Emmerdale, it says you, and then it has th- the, the recent three, and then it says click on. The other, to see the other episodes, it takes too long to load up. Oh, yeah. So you yeah. can't actually look. There's so 1, many. 1,801. you've been in... Uh, 1,801 and you've been in about 1,500 episodes. Yeah. It's <laughs> the quality rather than 300. Quality, like, and you can yeah, tell. Yeah. You're still learning. And you've been married four times, in it? Correct. And you've been yeah. married three times, in it? I mean, that's the yes. most unbelievable thing. What, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, you two would have found we one, start right one here. wife. Did you say the word pom life? <laughs> that you'd found one wife between the I thought you said pom life. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to kick off again. <laughs> Not in that way. He's up on, he's up on his feet. Um, <laughs> that guy's still there. You watch it, mate. <laughs> we don't know where he is. He's loose somewhere in the building. <laughs> yes, Richard. Yeah, I don't know. How, what, how, what the fuck's going on in Emmerdale? What's the farm? What's that? What's that about? <laughs> it's, it's, I tell you what, you know, uh, we, 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 Dominic and I have a very similar take, I think, on Emmerdale in the, the, the sense that uh, obviously we're fiercely proud of it. Um, um, but also, um, we never take it for granted. So we've been in it for quite a long time, over two decades each. And we re- both realise that it's a very long streak of luck. Um, and so, you know, we, we've never, we've never ever, ever thought, oh yeah, this is us now, this is us. Because, you know, like, you know, you've hinted at, we could, we could be beheaded, <laughs> uh, you know. 
and and uh, you know, and it, oh, d double beheading tragedy, you know. <laughs> but but we we it's the, I think we we genuinely love it, don't we? Is that fair? Am I speaking just like you love it? I right? feel completely loyal to us. Yeah, I really do. You know, it's, it's, it's meeting it's, people it's like uh, yeah. Ricky or so you kind of go on. Well. <laughs> You find people that look down on you as a soap person and go, I'm a rock star, and you're a soap person. And you kind of go, oh, yeah, yeah that's but, what we are. But we're, we're, I, I love what we do. You know, yeah. and I love Emmerdale. I love Yorkshire. I love Leeds. And I'm really, you know, I, 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 we're, we're proud of it. True. You know? Hey, man, yeah. it's, it's definitely my favourite Yorkshire-based, farm-based uh, soap <laughs> opera. <laughs> the best one out of all of those. I thought for a second then you were going to say it's my second favourite rural soap after the Arches and I was just going to come across the table like no, that. No, it's way better than the Arches. It's, it's, it's a genuine... There's, there's, a, there's a sort of perception about soap, right, generally, that um, somehow it's lesser. There's a sort of snobbery about it. But actually, we, our show and other shows, you know, EastEnders and Corrie and Holly, all those shows tell stories that that, that people can relate to and that people can congregate around at tea time and have a shared experience. And it matters to people. And because it matters to people, we've got to tell stories that are true to them. And there's a genuine pride in that, you know, because those sort of stories from way back around the campfire, the stories that people can relate to, we, we, us as a culture, as a British culture, we need that, you know. And so we, we are... I think, again, I'm speaking for Dominic, but I, I just genuinely feel it, it matters. You know, it matters. Yeah. And the, the snobbery about it is misplaced because I think people are, like, so people, uh, you see people doing interviews say, oh, I don't want it, actors saying things like, uh, oh, I don't want it to be like soap acting. But I don't know what that means because it, it's like, you know, we've got people in our cast who day after day are doing one, like, they might, first thing in the morning, they might be doing some slapstick comedy thing. And then at the end of the day, they're having to be broken and torn apart take something to do that, you know? And so I look around at my castmates and I think, this, this is all right, actually. This is something, this is art, actually, sure. you know? Yeah. I didn't mean that to be quite such a No, rant. it's nice. <laughs> it's fine. Well, I've heard you talk, talking about Dominic Cumberland, I think on another podcast, you were, saying, you were saying how close everyone is and how supportive everyone is, and that goes, because it's such a long running thing, yeah. that, you know, it's that thing where everyone's, you know, even those, those characters who aren't in it anymore, those actors who aren't with us anymore, their influence is still there because it passes down. It's like a college or a school or something where each generation, you know, informs the next one. And it's, it's this incredibly friendly atmosphere. And if people don't fit in, then they kind of disappear quite quickly. They do. There, there, is, a, there is a sort of thing. You, you do get people turning up with airs and graces. And I have seen people turn up and going... Yeah, I've just taken this because um, uh, I'm at the RSC in six weeks and I just thought I'd just do this little bit there. And you see them do a day's work and they come back sweating going, Jesus Christ, that's the hardest way day's work I've ever done. I don't know how you do it. You know, so, I, I, yeah, the snobbery stands, but um, I, I don't know what your question was. No, it was, about the, the, it, was about, it was about that kind of family, I guess, the family of the actors in it and the support you get within the, the team of people. I mean, that's an, it's an amazing thing because especially in acting... Because it is quite unusual when I've, you know, when I've been involved in anything with, with other people without acting or comedy, you're with people for two or three months and it's incredibly intense. You make friendships and then you don't ever see them again. You know, often. You know. Yeah, th this is a different animal because yeah. you're with these people for years and years and years, and it does become like a family. You know, and the green room is, 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 is you do feel like everybody's got your back. You, I, I quite like to see you do more though. You know, because I saw that thing you did uh, a few years ago, and it, it was a real heavyweight acting cast. You wrote it, I think, as yeah. well. And you, you just completely... I'm not just blowing smoke here. He genuinely <laughs> held his own in that. And I, I, quite, like, I quite fancy... Julian McKenzie, who was in it, who was a, a, a fantastic actor, uh, we saw a big screening of it, like in a cinema, you know, with just the cast. And she came out to me after and said, don't worry, on the TV, it doesn't, you don't see all that extra stuff. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's the last thing Julian McKenzie said to me. <laughs> It'll look, it, won't look so, it won't look that bad on the... Wow. The <laughs> That's a crushing blow. <laughs> <laughs> but she's great. She's a great lady. Um, and we used to listen to Ruby, Ruby, Ruby on the drive in the way in. That was the story I was going to <laughs> So I remember that. But yeah, no, no, I would sort of like to do more. I, I, I veered away from doing acting a little bit. And I, because I think it, ta it's an, it's an, it takes enormous confidence to be an actor, don't you think? No, it takes enormous neurosis. <laughs> yeah. to, 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 I, I, well, yeah, I guess so, up to a point. But yeah, it's, 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 um, I think most people are... It's based on how can I best deal with my fear, really, you yeah. know, and, and, and just sort of like 
find a way of suppressing that and, and expressing whatever the character's about. But it, 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 on a soap, you learn very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're not you... doing it in front of an audience either. We're doing it in front of two bored sound people just <laughs> yeah. with booms like <laughs> <laughs> So we've no one to show off to, you know. So it doesn't, you, don't, you don't get to show off, really. No. No. We, do, we do get to show off, Dominic. Occasionally, we do show off to each other, don't we? <laughs> we show off to each other. We've been very fortunate. We've had 22 years in the same room yeah. every day. We see each other more than, more than we see our wives, really. Yeah. So I think of you as my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. <laughs> Dominic. That's saying there. <laughs> we can go there, it's fine. Have you ever fallen out? I mean, what happens if people do fall out in the soap? Do you, do you, do we have fallen out. Uh, yeah, yeah we, we talk about it, actually. We talk it through. We, we've fallen out a few times, yeah. yeah. We were talking about it about half an hour ago, weren't we? Yeah, yeah we, we do, of course, yeah, you know. But I, th I think it's 2% of your time together is you might have a disagreement over something really petty and, you know, and it seems like the most important thing in the world. At the time. It's like any argument in any family. You think, oh, God, this is ridiculous. This changes everything. And then you sort of weigh it against the 98% of the fact that we've just laughed together for 22 years and there's no comparison between the two things, you know, and... and, and I'm lucky because I get, I get to work with my friend and he listens to m my stupid ideas for doing things on set and I listen to his really brilliant ideas and then we, we, we sort of... The director will never go for this. What, what? If I rub my hand in your face for about two minutes, the director will never go for that and then we do it and the director... I don't know whether it's just kind of like the director goes, well, is that what they do? Is that what they do? Now he rubs his hand in his face for the entire scene and, and we sort of... We're very, good at, we're very good at jumping to each other's defence. Even when we've fallen out, we usually get a text to each other on the way home going, oh, I'm really sorry, darling. Is everything all right? You know, so it's usually swept under the carpet straight away. But yeah, of course, you know, it's a, it's a hothouse environment. And you've got to swap ideas and work things out and argue about a situation. I think this way is better. I think this way is better. And I do this, that and the other. And, uh, and there are egos at work. And of course, of course, you know, but very seldomly. And it's usually worked out very quickly. But, but we do, and we, it would be a lie to say, you prick one of us and we both bleed. You know? yeah. but we, we have enormous respect and love for each other. Yeah. He said without looking him in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> but it's because you know, you're working in a, you know, it's a job where, hey, the pressure of getting everything done, I'm presuming pretty quickly. I mean, you're not getting lots of takes of this sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, and also, yeah, the, the heightened, you're, you're pretending to, you know, you've got to believe that you're the characters and the, the emotions are there anyway. So... Well, you're, even you're... today, you know, we, we, we said turn up at six, and we said let's let's meet up early for a beer. So we meet up an hour and a half early away from our families to have a beer together. We're not again. drunk. <laughs> <laughs> you're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you nearly won. <laughs> the two of you nearly won an award for the sexiest foot moment. <laughs> Yeah, well, this is recent. No, you have won some awards. What was it for again? Because this is recently appeared moment. on my Wikipedia page, not that I check it. <laughs> um, was this a foot magazine or something? Well, some, I don't know how true it is, but they did with source. I looked at it and it went to a source. <laughs> well, it well, was we're sexiest, looking at the internet. How sexiest, dark have you gone on the web? Sexiest, I found lots of things about you. Uh, <laughs> sexiest foot moment. It, it's perfectly possible that somebody on, on one of, who knows you're going to be on has put something on Wikipedia for me to find in order for it not to be true. Yeah. <laughs> but it says you lost to Jeremy Kyle. Who <laughs> the more I think about it... I don't want to ever lose not, to Jeremy he, Kyle. Jeremy Kyle tried to get all the audience to take their shoes off, but they wouldn't take their shoes off. And then he got one man to take his shoes off. It's not real. <laughs> so, so Whoever we, did that got me. You got me. So we won by default. We won a foot <laughs> massage, sexy, sexy time scene by yeah. default. Because what did we win? I don't think you won. I think you came first. Oh. <laughs> You have won awards. Uh, you've both won awards. You've both I've never awards. won an award in my life. Yeah. Have you won one for have I? funniest man in uh, the so, <laughs> Yeah, you won the entire you know, award. Most ridiculous. He's won yeah. about 15. No, I've not. I've won a, I don't want to name the numbers because it would seem too weird. <laughs> no, but he, you won, you won best, uh, uh, best comedic, comedic performance at the yeah. Inside Soap Awards because it was the best comedic I don't think I actually was given an award, though. I don't think I've physically ever won an award, oh. which I wear as a, banner, a badge of honour. I keep thinking, if you can go 22 years in the same job without <laughs> an award, it proves that you can be mediocre and a bit crap, <laughs> <laughs> but you should have consistency and you can feed your children. Yeah. Well, I'm on board. I'm on board with that. I'm on board. Um... You won an award for the scene where you won an award for best scene where someone turns off their wife's life support machine. That's what you. <laughs> that's what you won. No, just just quickly correct you there. Best dramatic performance. Oh, wow. Good night. 
uh, uh, we we won the best scene, most spectacular scene of the year. It was, this is about twenty five thousand. It's about eight BC when we filmed. But yeah, that was a, that was a long time ago. But I always try and remind Dominic when I can. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's got one more wife than you in the show. I'm winning he killed, killed one of them. I'm winning. 4-3. <laughs> it's an absolute thrill. It's going to extra time. It's still time. If the script comes back and the two of you, they decide you're going to get married to each other, would you? I'm all over it. Do yeah. anything. Yeah. 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 That's, that's, that's the dream. Yeah. That's the dream. But that's the part of being an actor. They've they just got, we'll produce it, we'll write it, they'll direct it, and yeah. you do the words. You, you, that's it. So if they say you, got, you open the vet's door and you're in there with a dog... <laughs> You know, you, you can't say, you can't say, absolutely not. Yeah. You just have to go, okay, okay. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff that happened in Emmerdale Farm when Amos was in it. They had that. And then that's why they dropped the farm bit. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> <laughs> and you two have all, well, they've done lots of things together. We're getting, we're on some of you, I was watching you on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire oh, together. Oh, God. That was so stressful, wasn't it? I love quiz shows, you know. And yeah, yeah. You did well. You, well, we yeah. should have done better. Right. I had to ring my mate. Well, we, we had that phone a friend thing and it was the most obvious. The, the question was, uh, it was whoever Rupert Murdoch's wife was at the time. Wendy Chang. No, you know. Yeah. You don't know. <laughs> but at the time we sort of panicked, but I think we could have, I think we got 16 grand in there, but we should have got 32 really. Yeah. They could have said, what's your favourite colour? And they'd have gone, uh, pass. <laughs> just, it, just Because they said stand on that. Stand on that, you two stand on them squares there or the, the X's or whatever. And we've all stood there and I said, I can't feel my no, feet. And you no. went, I, I'm going to have to sit down. And the worst thing about it is your names, right, throughout the quiz, rotate in neon around you. <laughs> around the, so all you can see is Mark Charnock and Dominic Blunt. And it's almost like you're being judged for, for, for not knowing everything. You feel like, like, like at the end, I have failed. Mark Charnock and Dominic Blunt, it just goes round and round and round. And it, it's terrifying. Yeah. But you come away from it, go, oh, that was an amazing experience. But it was, I lost at least five years off my life doing that. Yeah, it is, but it's hard when, you know, there's, there's, there's quite, I think your last question was one of those ones that was, if you'd had a 50-50, you might have been able to get it, but it was... What was it? Do you remember? I can't remember what it was. I watched it when I just when I booked you a few weeks ago. I can't remember. I, I was, love the you know, depth well. of the research. Is did you know get a question right? And they said, what's the diameter of a golf? Go they could, yeah. they could, they could, uh, for some bizarre reason, I knew it was four and a half inches. Yeah. And I never played golf that in That one was life. hard. Was that would have been out straight. That's, but all these things... I've been on Celebrity Pointless a couple of times. Uh, no, there's no one really, I don't really talk about it, but, um, <laughs> but uh, you know, that's if, the, if a question comes up on that you don't know, then that's you, but why, off you go. The, have you done The Chase? No, have you, have you done it? You've, God, you've we've done both it. done that, yeah. that's, that's terrifying as well. Yeah. That's a really, it's great fun, but it's really scary. And, the, and they'll ask you the most simple questions at the beginning and your just, brain just goes completely blank. Yeah. Panic. And you've been on, you've done Family Fortunes? Yeah. Yes. Mr. and Mrs.? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which I lost. Yes. But we stayed married. <laughs> <laughs> Which is amazing. Yeah. But it was one of them weird things is in the morning, there was a picture on my phone and it was uh, Lennox Lewis and Carol Decker out of T'Pau. <laughs> and it was one of them really weird dreams. You think, I had a really weird dream. I felt we'd spent the day with Lennox Lewis and Carol Decker from T'Pau. <laughs> Are but they we married. It was, really <laughs> it was really odd. Good. I love. I love all that stuff. That's well. You also do a um, a zombie film festival together. Was he, yeah. it? He's, Dominic's not satisfied with just being in Emmerdale and coasting on that. He works hard doing lots of other stuff. He does. It's yeah. Well, me and Mark have done that. We did the zombie film festival together. Yeah, yeah. And we did about eight of them, which I'm sure we'll return to. We, we the first one here. Off. Yeah, the first one here. That's yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then we moved on. So we, was, we, moved, we moved to the uh, Cottage Road Cinema up the road in about eight or nine years there. But it was, it was amazing. And lots of two people liked it. It was, it was an amazing experience because we'd show, we, we'd, we'd start the day at noon, yeah. and finish at midnight, and uh, we'd just show six zombie films. So there were 12. And we, without us asking, mm -hmm. the audience, virtually to a man, would all turn up dressed as var variations of zombies. My favourite over all the years being Zombie Jesus, and <laughs> Zombie Mary right. with a zombie baby coming out. <laughs> Do you remember that? It was yes. horrifying, absolutely horrifying. Yeah. But it was. It, and it, but what we did, because we'd seen the films over and over, because we're zombie. This is how we first bonded uh, uh, in the green room. We both realised we love horror films. We we just would go to the pub. There's a theme developing here, and get absolutely annihilated for twelve hours. It's brilliant. At one point, you turned around to me after uh, introducing the the fifth film mm. of the second one you went Dominic I can't tell what you're saying <laughs> and I'm stood next to you <laughs> <laughs> I 
But it was a good idea because we did that. We charged on the door. Then at the end of the night, we'd give all the money away to an animal charity. And we did that eight times and it was a good idea, you know. Yeah, yeah. And rather than because it, it, like, it was towards the, um, the WSPA, the World Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Or, or I think that's right, yeah. Um, uh, and everybody else does these uh, black tie do's and they, they get on uh, a band like uh, the Kaiser Chiefs or uh, something <laughs> like that. You know, so, so, and, uh, and, and it's a, it's a three-course meal and then there's, and there's an auction and all that. And it just well, didn't feel like us. And, the, and all we do is sit in, well, all we did before, was, <laughs> our wives lived in London and we were up here on our own living. <laughs> and all we do all the time was, was sit in dark rooms watching zombie films. And we just went, imagine if we could raise money for charity doing this. So we gave <laughs> so it a go. The, the charity thing was an excuse for us to just watch 12 hours of zombie films. Yeah, well, that's great. But that's, it's good. It, and you, you, but you've directed and, uh, three horror films, is that right? Yes, one zombie film and one zombie three horror films. films yeah. 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 So you had, well, the one I'm interested in, obviously, <laughs> is uh, Attack of the Adult Babies. Yes. I mean, first, there's a lot to unwrap, even. I haven't, I haven't watched the film. I've seen the trailer. First of all, uh, an actor from Human Centipede 2 is in, is in, yeah. is in that film. I'm, yeah. I'm quite obsessed with the Human Centipede. Harvey Lawrence. Yeah. Yeah, Lawrence Harvey, sorry. Yeah, yeah, he had two first names. <laughs> Yeah. Was, what was it? What did he play in the Human Centipede? Was he one of the cent Was he one of the? Uh, no, he was the chap. He played. He was in the second and third one. Right. He was the Has anybody seen Human Centipede? Yeah. Oh, right. Whoa. Who are you? <laughs> wow. <laughs> It was a chap. No, I can't say it. it was too awful. But he was. He was in them anyway. Yeah. I can't. Remember. If I had to say who he was, then um, then you'd have to edit it out. Okay. <laughs> well, it can't be that bad. We're going to leave him most. It of the is. Last... Okay. Um, <laughs> If you had to be in a human centipede with two of the characters from Emmerdale... This is a great question. <laughs> and you're in the middle. It's a great question. This is which, the nub of things right which, now, isn't which it? Two which two characters from Emmerdale? With you as, your, you as yourself, though, not a net, but it's the characters from Emmerdale. So, so you be you. Just to, just to fill people in, yeah. which is the wrong phrase to use, <laughs> given the scenario. This is a trail of people... Show us. No, no. <laughs> it's, a, it's a trail of people nose to tail. That's yeah. the best way. Is that right? Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah. Apparently it's anatomically doable, so that you... Oh, I don't want to go into it. Why are you going into it? No, don't no, go No, I'm into not going to go into it, no. We'll be sacked. We're part of a daytime programme where we'll be sacked. <laughs> so I had to keep going to part of a daytime programme. I thought I'd ask the sacked. question. I didn't think you'd get even this far into it. He would be one of them. Yeah. Yeah, because of trust. Would you be for a bit up, up, uh, above or below? Just leave, probably best to leave it, really. <laughs> Just best to... <laughs> Do you mind if people get you confused with your characters, Paddy? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, Donald. We've spent, ironically, for the first few years calling each other Marlon and Paddy to do each you? other until it's no longer a joke and all <laughs> I call him is Marlon now. Yeah, right. And that's all we do day after day. I, d I never call him Mark, ever. Do you think there's a danger that, like, once you're very old in a nursing home, <laughs> you'll start to believe you are Paddy and Marlon and the, not and the have forgotten yourselves? The lines have been yourselves? blurred for yeah. about a decade. The lines have been blurred between... Yeah. You, but it's basically everybody out, outside always genuinely very nice normally but they always call you Marlon or Paddy if you, yeah. and I play a chef in the show so what I you get um, I guess as a vet you get oh oh my dog's sick can you fix the best one I've had is um, what do you call a cat or another word for a cat a pussy yes <laughs> Paddy my can you have a look at my wife's Cats. That's yeah, the one I get cats. shouted at in the middle of Leeds. Usually when I'm at a cash point, panic! <laughs> you know, so that's the one I get quite a lot, yeah. And I, le less worryingly, I get, I always is, Marlon, can you, if you go to, a, if you go to an event, if you go to any kind of wedding, or a, oh, have you cooked this? Oh, you're not going to make us sick of it. No, 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 it's not a documentary. <laughs> not a documentary. No, 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 no. It's fiction, fiction. But anyway, back to uh, Attack of the Adult Babies. <laughs> What the fuck are you? What's wrong with you? <laughs> it's actually my wife. <laughs> it's your wife's idea. Yeah, it was my, wife, my wife's idea, yeah. She just thought that there was a gap in the market <laughs> for massively fat men yeah. running around in nappies after women nurses in suspenders. <laughs> and she was wrong. <laughs> But it's been released all over the world. It was, yeah. released, it was, it was massive in Malaysia, weirdly. 
But it got released in China and Japan and yeah. uh, Germany, Australia, America, Canada. It got all over. But for some reason, they said, oh, the Malaysians have gone absolutely mental over these films. They were like, all right. Yeah, so. so is there like a, a, a burglary happening in a place where people, where men go to pretend to be babies? Is that the... Yes. Have I got the... That, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's a posh and mansion and people go there. It, it's meant to be a comment on today's society. I don't know how, <laughs> but I just, I just directed it. You know. <laughs> Is that available on... Uh, it's available anywhere. Uh, yeah. iTunes and Blu-ray and... But you did the first film, that you, the, the first of the, the films you did, you write with your wife and just do it in your own house. Yes, right? yeah, yeah. For two, so just uh, the before two of Dawn, you. same again, yeah. yeah. But that's where it came from. We did a zombie film called Before Dawn, yeah. filmed it in our house, and it was supposed to be released on Left Films in this country, and it, uh, met, a company called Metrodome took it, and it just was released all over the world. And they've just re-released it in this country now, and... Um, it's just one of the things you just go, oh, and then they said, well, we've got more ideas. I'm like, well, we'll pay for them as well. So it's just been quite strange, really, but good fun, you know. Yeah, it's great. I mean, it must be difficult to fit the, the, that time. Is that you're you writing and thinking about it, or if you're directing, you're thinking about it in sort of the scenes you're not in, you know, when you're... No, so I usually take time off. So And I took, right. uh, uh, weirdly, uh, about two years ago, I took five months off work and said, can I have five months off? I, I was taken on uh, by a company in America called Radar Films that did Jumanji and lots of different films, and, and they said, we'll give you £6 million, and uh, there's, there's this cast and this cast, and it's filmed in Puerto Rico, and I said, Emma Dale, bye-bye for five months. And then two weeks before I was supposed to go out, they went, ah, uh, we're not going to do it now, we'll do it in the future sometime. And I went, I've just taken five months off Emma Dale. And they went, well, that's not our problem, bye. So all these doors that opened just all yeah. shut completely, and that but was it's upsetting. Like, it's so impressive to like, be, you know, have three feature films made, it's incredible. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know. know. I just, we just do what we do. It's a yeah. little cottage industry we do from our house with me and my wife, Joanne, and we just, we just potter along. And for some reason, people keep going, we'll have that, we'll have that. So we're going to Cannes in, uh, next weekend, I think, and we've got more meetings there for You're two other films. taking adult babies well, so. to Cannes? I don't think... Uh, we, were, we were looking at a sequel, but nobody yeah. wants it. Okay. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'll You'd ask be perfect, him. in it? I would. I'll be in You're it. I'm a good actor. Ask, ask Marlon. He loves me. <laughs> I do actually. He'd be cooking me a meal and everything. Oh no, I don't cook. <laughs> if you're spending all that time pretending to be someone, though, you know what I mean. That's, that's you could, do. You lose the essence of yourself within. Uh, I mean, oh, both of you. No, 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 no. It's, you do sort of like kind of adopt this sort of parallel persona a little bit, but it, it doesn't feel damaging in any way. It feels like lucky, apart from that, because you can escape from your lanky self into another lanky person <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and just sort of enjoy that. There, that's the, one of the best things about acting, I think, is that you can just shed yourself for a bit. And I've managed to shed myself for 20 years. <laughs> you know, so it's... it's uh, no, I love it, actually. It, it, I don't feel like I've lost any of myself at all. No. Uh, and not because the, pe the two people are similar, really. They're very different in a lot of ways. We're both neurotic, but other than that, that's the only... But it's, it's been a... It's been quite healthy, actually, strangely. Yeah. It's been, uh, uh, do you know what I mean, Dom? It's been, it's been, I, I, quite, I find it quite therapeutic. I think, um, uh, I think certainly when you get to your mid 20s, people start uh, typecasting you as a certain role. So I would always get cast as the thicker set northern lad. So why put yourself out of work for three months to just get them two days on, on something like Holby yeah. as the thicker set northern lad? You know, when you can get 22 years out and out of something that's the best. Seriously, the best <laughs> job in the world, yeah. you know. And you said, but you both seem very sane, which isn't always <laughs> the case with any kind of celebrity, but with actors, with actors especially. <laughs> you're very down to earth and you're pretty, you know. Compared to who? Well. <laughs> what on earth do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> to, let's say, other actors. Oh, Jesus. well done. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think I think uh, we, we're both working class uh, lads, and we, we we're both from a, a background that I think if you started acting like an idiot, you know, but oh god, you know, it, it, I'd tell him off if he did it, and he'd tell me off if I did it, and my mum would tell me off if I did it, and my dad would absolutely, you know, and so. Uh, there's no chance of that happening, really, because the people around me will go, oh, God, you're a tit now, are you? I see. <laughs> you know, oh, oh, right, you know. I realised very early on watching Coronation Street with my family and aunties, uncles, cousins, about 16 people in one room going, I like him, I don't like him, he's an idiot. I did like him, but I don't like them now. And, all. and, and that's how people watch soaps. And yeah. you realise that that's, that's the vulnerability that you're working under. So you, there's no room for being... 
And Twitter brings you down to earth real quick. <laughs> <laughs> to, you know, you can, you, 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 there's this sort of like, because it gives people all that power to sort of like, you know, there's, there's a sort of, you know, you, there's a minority of people, but there, is, there are a very vocal minority of people who can say things about, it might be about your appearance. There's, it, I don't know what this is about. I've got a, a, a person at the moment who keeps tweeting me about my hair dye. Which <laughs> I, I've never dyed my hair right. And if I did, I would finish it. I would finish <laughs> doing the sideburns and just get rid of all the grey, you know. But they say, oh, nice hair dye job, mate. <laughs> yeah, well, why are you bringing that up, you know? You know, it's just like something really dramatic might have happened in the episode. Everybody was killed. Why are you mentioning my hair colour? You know, there's a, it, Twitter's odd, isn't it? Yes. I only go ever go on Twitter to remind you that I have no hair and I'm fat. <laughs> <laughs> Every morning like that. Oh, oh. Like every other tweet, you know, you were great in tonight episodes. What's the next tweet say? Jesus Christ, oh my God. <laughs> it's just cruel, you know, yeah. it's full of it. Well, you know, but it's, again, it's what, you've got to let it d d just water off a duck's back, isn't it? That's, that's what you're going <laughs> to do. I'm going to, um... <laughs> what, worth obsessing about. So, um... <laughs> uh, have you, like, this is uh, an emergency question, I think safe. Have you ever been in a police car, like in real life, not when you're playing a policeman? Maybe it isn't a safe question. Uh, yes, but only... Um, uh, I was with my mate in Leeds, and we were trying to get from one bar to another, uh, which was right on the other side of town, and we happened to walk past two policemen, and they said, Oh, all right, Marlon. And I went, Hello. And they said, well, what are you doing tonight? And we had a little chat, and now so I'm trying to get across Leeds, and they drove us in the back of the van across Leeds wow. to the other bar. <laughs> well done indeed. With the lights going? Oh, that would have been fantastic. <laughs> and then just sort of thrown out the back yeah. of the van. When I had a Hitler moustache... It's a long I story. saw that gig, um, I saw the gig. <laughs> I, I had my mobile phone stolen, and I got to be in the back of a, a police car with the lights on, driving around Shepherd's Bush Green with a Hitler moustache. <laughs> looking for the perpetrator. <laughs> wow. I, rem I remember, I listened to this on your podcast, yeah. I remember hearing that story and, and, and thinking, well, that's London, isn't it? Because <laughs> <laughs> it, wasn't it a cyclist who just went past you and yeah, grabbed yeah. it? Great, yeah, it happens quite a lot. <laughs> Does it really? Yeah, yeah. You've lost a lot of iPhones. No, but I heard a lot of people that that's happened to. Just oh, I thought you meant just you. Grab it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone like a with a Hitler moustache they go for, they just hate Hitler for some reason in London. <laughs> They won't just forgive and forget. Let it wash over you, that's what I say. No point in harping back, is there? It's a long time ago. <laughs> Let's go. I'll go early, but I'll, I'll go early. I'm going to go... Cl I'm not going to go... I'm not going to be... I'm so tempted to be a bad <laughs> uh, Have you ever seen a ghost? Let's find out about you. No, no, because no. they don't exist. Not a I'll just reiterate that. Amos has never appeared on the set. <laughs> and don't, no. don't marry that woman. She'll be on her life. So before. Amos turns up on set as a ghost <laughs> and starts advising a fictional character <laughs> about who he should marry. Yeah. That's the scenario you're painting. Yeah. No. Yeah, I, have a, I have a theory that all medians are evil, muddy-grabbing people that are liars and wow. just make money from people <laughs> wow. that are grieving. Ah. Harsh. Harsh on the mediums. They don't get very good information out of people, out of the ghosts. That's what. If I die yeah. and I come back to my son, I won't be going, it's a. It's a, a D. D. <laughs> I'm going, it's your dad. I'm dead. There's no chance. He's I would. Put, if you've got like a sentence, I would imagine they've got like a sentence to get out. I'd go, it's be... Islam! It's Islam! <laughs> it's Islam! <sighs> Do, go to his, do Islam! Because <laughs> you want to know what happens after you... They know what happens after you're dead. All right. Oh, I see. Oh, I yeah. see. Right. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Did you hear me I was saying? I really, It's because really it was about five minutes after, after you shouted... we We thought, oh, crikey. It was two minutes after you shouted Hitler, Hitler, and now you're shouting <laughs> Islam, Islam. I was thinking, oh, my God, what? Oh, I'm need to... It's a very different... different... We're going to lose our jobs. <laughs> yeah. well, why are we here? Don't want that to happen. Um... Because uh, we're on tour, only because we're on tour, in the provinces, and I know you people are hungry for it. Would you rather have a handmade out of ham? Yeah. 
You idiots. <laughs> or, <laughs> or an armpit that dispenses sun cream. So you can, you can have a hand made out of ham. A you hand can eat, made yeah, out of You can ham. eat it. I know you like meat. Uh, eat it and it'll grow back. Not if you eat the whole thing. It'll, you know. It always grows back. It'll grow back. It'll take a look. If you eat a lot, it'll take and a what's bit what's with longer. the armpit? You've got sun, sun cream. Any <laughs> Personal supply of sun cream. Any factor you choose. I have the skin of a, of a, a very young uh, albino child. So nice. I, I have... Um, <laughs> my pattern is uh, a white, red, peel stroke... White. That's my that's yeah. my circle. So I would that, that would be brilliant for me. Yeah. The ham, I'm, I'm with him. Fit right in. The hand of ham seems like an appalling option. I think it'd be nice. Do you really though? Yeah. Do you really think it would be nice if you were hungry? Are you amazing. sucking on ham over there? <laughs> yeah. Is that what you're doing? Have a little nibble. Would it hurt? No. So you could eat as much as you wanted. Yeah, and it would always grow back. It's a very specific scenario. But that's it, a continual uh, food source. Yeah. Yeah, but it's ham. <laughs> Which we know is bad, is not. But if you season it and you put some mayonnaise on, and, and it doesn't, and you said it didn't hurt. Doesn't hurt. Doesn't hurt at all. So I think it's quite pleasant. It's you like genuinely pleasant look like you were trying to convince me that it was a. You, you sort of look concerned. Oh no, you're not seeing it. You're just not seeing it. I think it's the ham. A lot of people go for the sun cream. Of course, yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, you're my uh, only celebrity fan. No, I'm not. You are. Oh, you're not my fan. <laughs> <laughs> I've lo uh, lots of other people have like loads of, you know, A-list ce big celebrities coming to see their shows. But I think celebrities are very loose term in this when, scenario. But when I'm, you know, whenever I'm in Harrogate, one time out of four, you will come and see that show. <laughs> You see, I told you, you this before, week. the show I missed in Harrogate, yeah. I went to see in Edinburgh. Well, which, and I didn't come and find you afterwards in a weird store crew. I just went to see it because I thought, I, I like his work, I'll go and see it there because yeah. I missed it there. It's nice that you come. I'd know when you're in because everyone goes, Marlon Dingles, don't believe it, Marlon Dingles. Who, from the go, in your, in your team, the Dingles, who says that to you in your team? <laughs> it's Marlon Dingles. In your team of, of, of London-based <laughs> assistants and, and uh, <laughs> managers, who's it? Marlon Dingle from Emmerdale's in. I'm not having it. If you ever do a, if you ever do a podcast in Leeds, <laughs> come on. Thank you for coming. To, you know, because like some people get loads of all the celebrities come and see them. I got, got your one, books and everything. One. I'm a proper, I'm a devotee, mate. Thank I'm you. like a well, weirdo. You know, He's not got my book as well. <laughs> <laughs> Worried about the power of that book now. <laughs> Don't try and change. That is the that is the message. <laughs> try and change. How we do? We're we having such fun. Uh, it's um. Uh, have you ever planted a tree or chopped one down? If you've done both, which was the more satisfying? I I've no. The idea of chopping down trees is uh, no. I've got an apple tree, a cherry tree, and a plum tree in my garden, and I, which I'm a bit obsessive about. So I've no. I didn't plant. They were just there. Right. Um, I've gone into detail and wish I hadn't. Uh, <laughs> no, it's good. It's a but, but the blossom's very nice and yeah. the the fruit is delicious. Is that okay? Yeah. Is that all right? I had a quince tree Did in you, my you garden. Did you fancy southern rascal? Well, it was. I bought. I bought. Uh, I didn't know. We had a quince tree. We had a quince tree, and we don't have a big garden, so these trees were a problem. We had a quince tree, and in the middle of the garden we had an apple tree. And the first year, we got quite a lot of apples, and it was quite nice, but then that tree had to come down. Uh, and then that tree came down, and then the other tree bloomed so... It didn't bloom quinces the first year. So many quinces grew, because it wasn't in the shadow of the apple tree, that the quince tree fell down and died. Because <laughs> we didn't know what they were. We were looking at them going, is it pears? Oh. So you could no longer say, darling, I've harvested the quinces. <laughs> I get, the, get the croissants in and the frappuccinos. Oh, isn't the South great? We had so... <laughs> We had so many quinces. I didn't know what to do with them. I just chucked them on a compost loop in the field in the end. We kept them for a bit, and then we thought, what are we going to do with these? Not a pair would have been nice. I guess I, I've just got an image of you surrounded by quinces looking <laughs> bewildered. And that, that is the image I will carry with me. It's good. Well, uh, it's good. <laughs> it's good. To, yeah. Okay, this is a good question. I think this is fine. Would you rather have a fold-out fold table that grew out of your ribcage, <laughs> which could be put up and down in mere seconds, or a, st <laughs> or a stretchy back skin, which could be pulled over your head to act as a makeshift bivouac? 
I'd like your answer, and then also yeah, I'd like you to answer in carrots. <laughs> Are you genuinely weighing it up? Is yeah, like a table. Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. I, was, I forgot where I was then. The table's good oh, though, right? Good ideas. I mean, the table, really strong you're at a party, ideas. put that down, drink food there. Bivouac, you're at a party, it's raining outside. One or the other? Yeah, one or the other, you can't have both, come on. Uh, neither of them hurts. Sorry, <laughs> what's, what, what, why what's are you so <laughs> concerned they're going to hurt? What's a bivouac? I'd say a bivouac. Well, it's like you know, it's like a tent, isn't it? A bivouac. You got a tent coming out your back, or yeah, a thing coming out your ribcage. Yeah, big skin, though. It's your skin. skin. That's going to. I change. mean, I think you could pull it over and sleep in it. I think you could do that. But oh, you're... so it's multi-purpose. No, no, no. Yeah. You couldn't sleep in it because if you fall asleep, your hands would let go and it's back and back. <laughs> you could peg it down. No, you're mistaking that for the retractable, the, the retractable <laughs> bivouac. Yeah. He's talking about the sort of one that you actually operate and then. No, you right. pull it over. No, 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 no. You pull it over. You, st you, you specifically can it said. In. You can pin it. Sorry to point, but you specifically said you pull the skin from your back and pull yeah. it over your head. Yeah. Well, Why you does couldn't it fall asleep under it? Pull it, pin it down with some pegs. But then that would hurt. It wouldn't hurt. Is it That's like fine. the ham in that yeah. way? It doesn't <laughs> hurt. It would be pleasant. If there anything, it would just be a pleasant, slightly sexual sensation. <laughs> You know, it's how we both dropped our microphones when it got to that point. <laughs> but it means if you were trying to sleep in the bivouac and you moved, you are part of the bivouac. <laughs> that would be the problem with it, I guess. I just can't see your legs not getting wet. You'd have to come right over your feet. Yeah. It? Although, the, the t the, the t I can't actually believe I'm actually, got, actually genuinely thinking it through. The, 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 the fold-out table from your rib cage. socially speaking, if the drinks are on the table, yeah. you're stuck with people for an awfully long time, <laughs> aren't you? Well, if other people put their drinks on their on your table. Oh, is it just a personal table for you? Yeah, it's just like... But you didn't explain that. You just made it sound like a it sort of like a table. It doesn't become like a table. table. You, it's like it's there, and then there's a fold-out little like a like a like a tray you might get on the back of a seat in a people carrier. Wow, yeah. <laughs> you lost confidence then. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> might have a little hole for you to put your coffee in. That's never the, quite the right size. And now you're making it up. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's ridiculous. <laughs> you don't have to answer, that's what I'm saying. Uh, this is question 608 in emergency questions, if you're playing along at home. <laughs> Why do we even bother? <laughs> yes. Is that a question? Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, no, it's, okay, I'll, I'll ask you. Right, if, right, so, you know, right. If, if you had the option, right, and you had enough money to cover it all and all that, would you retreat from society and just thought, oh, I'm just going to bend this off now because it's, you know, everyone's annoying and, you know, and all politics. It's just, I'm just going to go to, I don't know, say Scot or an island off Scotland. Would you do it? Would you do it? I wouldn't go off Scotland. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Uh, all hearts. right, let's think of something that's more suitable to you. So, like, um, <laughs> would you go to the Silly Isles? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and just, just move there to a remote part of the Silly Islands and just, just bin it all off. Uh, well, yes, I would. Would you really? Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure I wouldn't, actually. The idea of it's quite appealing, yeah. isn't it? Do you think you could be self-sustaining? Would you, would you be able to sort of... Oh, no, I need to have loads of people there to do all the stuff and be my friends. <laughs> so, so you'd need a... So... <laughs> I can't do anything. So I need you, someone you, to do it. You take I the insecurity with stuff. you, is yeah. what you're saying. You take I the need like, someone with to do, can mend things, put up pictures. <laughs> yeah. You need a DIY man. Yeah. And husband. Yeah. Really, really yeah. is what you're saying. Yeah. And it'd be nice to have the kids there sometimes. <laughs> it's only a boat ride away, isn't yeah. it? So. It's true. Would I bother? Would you Would bother? You? Why do we bother? I don't. Uh, what? Why do we bother? I don't know what the. Yes. You two seem pretty happy in your lives. I'd still turn up for work. Wait, even if I won the lottery, I'd it's still turn yeah, up absolutely. I love that job. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I think that, that's the problem, isn't it? With, with, uh, this is a bit of a, a sort of like... I, I will, won't go on about this too long. But we treat happiness, don't we, in our culture as a kind of... The way we address happiness and talk about it is like it's a career, right? So the verbs that we use to talk about, oh, I need to achieve happiness, I need to reach, I need to get... You know, we, we, it's almost like it's a, a job. And what people... This is only my take on everything, but people... So the worst advice we've been given as a culture is live each day as if it's your last. It's a terrible piece of advice. <laughs> it's truly terrible. 
Because really what we seek is contentment. That's not happy. It's not the same thing. It, and so if you, this sounds like I've written it. I'm making this up as I go along. But <laughs> if, you, if you look at life as a graph, right, and the mean line going across it is contentment, right? The happiness is a byproduct of that, right? And so, but people keep wanting to make the happiness high points the line. But so everybody forgets to look for contentment because they're so looking for a buzz and a happy thing all the time. That, and, it, and, it's, and I think that infects all of our, our culture because we, we're trying to, we, we forget that it's all right to just have a normal day. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that's what he's, he's saying, we're having a normal day at the moment. That's what yeah. he's saying, he's just having a normal day. That, that's the audience like saying, yeah, this yeah. is really normal. <laughs> Yeah, I wish I'd come here and been happy, but it's you two idiots. <laughs> oh, that's good. I'm glad you're happy. I'd like it. I'm I'd content. like, all, I'd it's like all my guests to be content. <laughs> I just want happiness to spread some happiness in the world. Uh, let's see what else I've got for you. We're going to have to. I'm conscious of you having to get a train, so I'm not going to. Oh, look, we haven't talked about you being on Cadfile. Oh, he's talked about being on Cadfile <laughs> all the time. Whenever I can bring it up, it's up. Nobody that's, knows what that is, I tell you. That's like, like, it was a medieval detective series with Derek Jacobi in the mid-90s. I mean, obviously, he's a medieval detective. He was a monk, but he was a detective. Yeah. And you were Brother Oswin. Yes. I was his, I was his sort of side... His nerdy... Another nerd. <laughs> it was his... Uh, there's a thing... Yeah. yeah. The, he, I was his nerdy sidekick. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And the, I became an actor because I came home from Bolton Town Centre one night, quite drunk, and Derek Jacobi was starring in a play called Serrano de Bergerac on Channel 4, and they'd filmed it. They'd filmed the, the, the hit stage play, and I looked at it, and Derek Jacobi was being amazing, and that was the moment I thought, oh, I want to be an actor. It was one of those moments. And then I got the job working with Derek, and eventually I worked up the courage to say, well, actually, what happened was, there was a director called Herbie Wise who said to Derek, this guy became an actor because of you, and I was really embarrassed, but kind of pleased he'd brought it up. <laughs> and I went up to him, because he was my absolute hero, and we got on so well, and I went, oh, I'm, is that awkward? And he went, no, it's wonderful. And he went, there's only one other person who said that to me, and that's Kenneth Branagh. I thought, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Sure. <laughs> sure. sure. No, not a problem. I'll, I'll go with that. Yeah. <laughs> We've played football with Kenneth Branagh, haven't we, Dominic? I've wow. shaken Kenneth Branagh's Why don't you tell Richard the story of when you met Kenneth Branagh, Dominic? <laughs> I'll say it really quickly. Yeah. You're a natural raconteur, you see. Right, right, I was going to try and get it out, right. So we went to play this charity football match and, um, and then Kenneth Branagh was playing and we didn't manage to say, oh, you're Kenneth Branagh, you're amazing. Uh, but he went to have a shower and we were dressed and he, he came out naked and I said, look, Mark. Naked? <laughs> he said, we're, we're going on this bus. So I'm, going to, I'm just going to, I'm just going to say it, I'm just going to get up and say it. So I said, Kenneth, hiya, I'm sorry, I know you're completely in the nude. But I just want to say, <laughs> it was absolutely brilliant playing football with you and I just think you're fantastic. Thank you very much. I was watching from 10 yards away, horrified. <laughs> he went, oh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, anyway, I know that was awkward anyway, and I knew I'd never get a chance to do it again. So I'm sorry to bother you and bye-bye. And we got on the bus. And we sat there for about five, ten minutes thinking, what are we waiting for? And then Kenneth Branagh turned up on the wrong we were waiting for. Not naked. Fully clothed. Ah, <laughs> oh, he'd have liked it. He'll tell that story. He looked good, did he? He looked terrific. He looked good. Yeah. I wish I'd been there. Right, well, um, I was just thinking about Emma Thompson then for a while. Uh, it's... <laughs> there was a connection somehow in my head. So, um, look, it's been really fantastic to talk to you guys. Thanks so much for coming along and making my trip to Leeds. That's... Even better. Even better than I thought it was before. <laughs> Beautifully done. <laughs> uh, you're fantastic, guys, and uh, good luck with the next 1,800 episodes of Ever Now. <laughs> as long as you don't get beheaded. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark and Dominic. Thank you. Thank you very much. You've been brilliant. Come and see us again if you can. I'm going to go down there. I'll see you.
How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>